Do actors need an IMDb Pro account? And I think the question is not so much about do we need it? I think the question is more about when do we need it? Because as far as I'm concerned, every actor should have an IMDb Pro account. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be in a place where all of the industry professionals go. Casting directors go there to look up actors all the time. Directors go there, producers. It's the main hub that everyone uses just about every day. So why wouldn't you wanna be there? I'm gonna dive into the importance of IMDb Pro, what it is, why you need it, how much it costs, and I'm also gonna do a tutorial where I share my page and show you how to set it up in a way that leaves a lasting impression. So in regards Parts of when should you get IMDb Pro? Well, it all depends on where you are in your career. If you're a new actor who's just starting out, who's just starting your training, who's getting ready to work, you may not need it right now. But if you're actively auditioning, performing in theater, doing improv here in LA or New York, if you're creating content, you should have an IMDb profile because you could seriously be limiting your opportunities and missing out on being included. Whether you're a, a New York actor, an LA actor, Southeast, any region in between, having an IMDb Pro account should be a staple in your actor marketing toolkit. It's as important as your headshot. So again, the real questions are, what's the purpose of IMDb Pro? And how do you set it up right? So what is IMDb? Well, it stands for Internet Movie Database. It's a searchable directory for everything that's related to television and film in the entertainment industry. And I want to really clear up any confusion between IMDb and IMDb Pro. IMDb is the free version for the public, movie fans, and casual users, but IMDb Pro is for industry professionals, so actors like us, casting directors, agents, we all use it. Now you have to pay for it, there is a subscription for the profile, but you get to upload your headshots, your reels, your bio, it's like an extension of your resume and it allows you to control how the industry views you. So why do you need IMDb Pro? Well, your account is like your digital business card. It gives you credibility. It shows casting directors what you've worked on and who you've worked with. Let me give you an example. Let's say you were on an episode, a recent episode of Law & Order SVU with a compelling storyline and a casting director sees your performance and wants to know more about you, maybe get in touch with you. Their first stop is IMDb Pro. They're gonna look you up, they're gonna find your headshots, your bio, your acting credits, your special skills, and your contact info. But if you're not on there, if you don't have a membership, or if you don't have your profile completely set up, then you've probably just missed out on an opportunity to be on a casting director's short list. Maybe they're casting something right now and they see you and they're like, oh, I want to have that person come in. But it's also valuable when you're looking for agents because you can use IMDb Pro for research. You can find their contact details. You can see who they represent. You can even check and see if their clients have recent credits. I mean, just the other day, I was auditioning for a new television show that I knew nothing about. I use IMDb Pro to look up the show's plot summary, the cast, the producers, and I even found an article that helped me understand the show's tone. There are countless ways in which you can use IMDb Pro. I'm not gonna hold you there, I think you get it. Let's get into the cost. For non-union actors, IMDb Pro costs $20 a month or $150 a year. But for SAG-AFTRA members, we get 30% discount, which lowers that monthly to $14 or $105 a year. Now in the past, we used to have to use a promo code, but they're getting rid of that, so now you need to verify your SAG-AFTRA badge to get your 30% off. And also what's great about that is once you do that, there'll be a little SAG icon listed on your profile, which is helpful because sometimes casting directors cannot bring in non-union people, so they don't have to question. They can look you up, see that you're SAG after, and then bring you in for an audition. And hey, listen, I get it. If the annual fee is too much for your budget right now, maybe you can do a month to month basis, or at the very least, when you know you're about to do a, a, an agent or manager campaign, you should definitely sign up at least for that month or if you have like a television or a film that's going to be releasing and premiering, then definitely do it for that month also. And then once you get the money, please be sure to pay annually because it's cheaper to do. So the first thing you want to do is go to imdbpro.com, scroll to the bottom, 
click on help and then click on how to join. And that way you can follow the instructions on how to get your page started. Whenever you join, there could be like three challenges that you could face. So one is reclaiming your page. And you're probably thinking, why would I have to reclaim it if I never started in the first place? Well, sometimes your agents and your managers will set up your page and they'll claim it. Or if you were a child actor, maybe your mother or your parents set up, set it up for you. But if you've worked on a project and they added it to IMDb, then IMDb automatically made a page for you. And it's very easy to reclaim your page. The second challenge that you can run into is if you can't find your IMDb page. I believe that you have to have at least one credit listed as a project to qualify, so you may have to wait. The third one is merging duplicate pages. Now, you can have duplicate pages because maybe a production spelled your name correctly when they input your credit, and now you have two pages. But don't worry, you can merge those two. So let's get in the setup. I learned how to properly set up my IMDb Pro profile when I was interning for a network TV show in the casting office. The more that I had to look up actors and I started to recognize um, how big name actors had their pages set up, but also recognizing what was important for the casting director when we were looking up actors that's I took notation and that's why you see that my profile is fully filled out so let's get into step one step one is photos that's really you know that's like the main portion of well aside from credits but photos are important and so you can list headshots you can list uh, red carpet events behind the scenes events uh, my favorite are, are screen grabs, but I'll get into that in a second. So with photos, you want to upload high quality headshots that you probably use in auditions. And the one thing I have to just stress really, that's really important is avoid overloading your profile with too many similar headshots, especially the ones where I see some people and they'll have like 20 to 30 headshots and they're pretty much all the same, except the outfits have changed. We're not doing that. We're uploading, we're creating a story and we're trying to make this look like a press kit. So all you need to really upload is like three, four, five, maybe headshots. Cause really what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill this page with still screenshots. And so you can see here on my page that most of my featured photos are still photos with me and the series regular or the star of the show. Before I get into that, because this, this is not about flexing, this is really about letting a casting director know that I know how to work opposite the big name star and I'm not going to, you know, fangirl out or I'm not going to, you know, not be able to do my work because I'm nervous. So this is really more about that. But if you're wondering how I get the screenshots, basically once it airs, I will play it on my phone and then I'll pause it. Make sure that you get it as crisp as possible. You don't want a, a blurry photo and also make sure everybody looks good. And then I'll just screenshot it. And so I'll use that photo and upload it. And I'll also be sure to add uh, like the production or the network name in the copyright, just so I can give credit where credit's due. I'm not trying to say that I own this photo. I'm just trying to let y'all see that I can, that I've done this show and I can work opposite these types of people. And also if you look at my headshots, I also credit the photographer as well. And if they own the copyright, I'll list their name in the copyright because it's helpful for press. Now, step two is uploading reels. All right, y'all, in this day and age, in this day and digital age, if you don't have a reel, you are shooting yourself in the foot because as every casting director will tell you, you've got a camera in your back pocket. So even if you don't have something that's professional from, from a set or something like that, that's okay. You can use a well shot monologue if you want to add some production value, like in your home or maybe at school or something, do that. Or if you have a really great self tape that you like, that you feel like maybe got you some work or whatever, you can use that as well. You can use either of those things to get to get you by until you start producing or start getting on actual professional productions, because everybody knows that everyone has to start somewhere, but you have to have something. And just be sure that whatever you use, it shows off your best work and we can hear you and we see you and it's well lit. Now, if you look at mine, you see that I have a drama reel, a comedy reel, a singing reel, and my sketch characters. All of my sketch characters 
are self-produced and I filmed them in my house. So if you're really good with creating content or if you know someone who does that, you might want to write something and do it, you know, film that yourself and then you'll have like a nice little piece of footage. Step three is contact and representation. Okay. Everything that I'm saying here is very important, but it is crazy if you don't have an email address listed on your profile. So when I was interning for that casting office, there were so many people that we had to forego bringing in because they didn't have an agent or at least they didn't have their agent listed connected to their profile and they didn't have any contact information. And in those times where I, where I could at least try to Google people, if I went to like their website, they wouldn't have contact information there. So anything uh, where you have a public facing profile on the internet, even if that's uh, casting networks, actors access, always at the very least put your email and the email that you use often, not like some email that you hardly use because you're like, oh, I don't want people to contact me, these strangers. Listen, email is safe. They don't know where you live. A phone number, I can understand. I wouldn't put my phone number, but you have to have an email because you, the main thing that we're trying to do as actors, aside from being good at our craft, is being findable. So put an email on your um, on your IMDb Pro profile. And also, if you do have an agent, be sure to put connect your agent on your profile and connect your agent, the agency and your prospective agent. That way, casting directors and whoever's trying to find you to give you legitimate opportunities have two ways to find you. Step four, credits and filmography. So you can expect pretty much any production that you work on is going to list your credit for you. However, they don't always do that. And I've been finding lately for whatever reason that when I book co-stars, their production's not adding them for me, but that's okay because you can add your own credit manually. So before we get to the manual part, adding, um, adding it manual, manually, I want you to be sure that you look at all your credits and make sure that everything is accurate. Now, if you just worked the show yesterday, it's not gonna be on IMDb until it gets close to airing and you definitely should not add your credit until after it's made public because if you uh, add your credit you could be breaching your NDA which is usually in your contract whether you know that or not and you don't want the legal liability you don't want the legal smoke right so let's stay away let's just wait until it airs and you can always reach out to production and ask them to help you with the information but I'm going to show you how to add your credit manually so go to the IMDB profile of the television show or the film. I'm gonna choose television because we have to choose the season and the episode. And once you do that, you click edit page, you click cast and crew, and then you click add cast. And you wanna type in the exact billing of the role you played that's listed on your contract. Because if your information is wrong, IMDB is probably gonna deny it. But if they push it through, they may list it as uncredited, which kind of devalues your credit. So just be accurate so that you can get your proper credit. Since we're talking about credits, this section here allows you to feature the shows or the films that you've been on. You can do that manually yourself or you can let IMDB choose it. You see I have NCIS listed as my first one. I shot that back in 2015, but the show was still on and it's like a really credible show. So I put that first because that lends some credibility to the fact that I was able to work on that show. And I had two episodes, so it's kind of like a recurring. I'm not sure if you can leave them vacant or just forego it altogether if you don't have shows or films that you want to credit yet, but you can figure that out on your part. And then also let's come down here to this about section. It's kind of like a resume that you can fill in. So you can list other performances, like maybe you've done theater. Um, I also list training. You can also add credentials like awards and accolades. Also, you can add your education, list any schools you attended for your craft and or classes that you took that have a specific skill set like improv. You can see here that I added a one year UCLA program that I did and also Second City here. Now, step five is your bio. This is the section where you get to create your narrative. You get to tell them who you are professionally. You can share your background, career highlights, your skills. This is your chance to show a bit of your personality all while staying professional. And then step six, 
you can add a vanity URL. So instead of this long string of letters and numbers that they give you, you can create your own URL, which is imdb.me forward slash your name. You can use that in your email signature, postcards, any marketing material that you want to put out your website. It's just great to have and it's so clean and professional looking. That's IMDB Pro in a nutshell. Um, I'd be curious to know what you think about do you need it right now? Do you have one right now? Have you been on the fence? Have you been curious about the two schools of thought on it? Really, there's just one school of thought. It's just like you need it. If this is the party where everyone is in terms of people that can hire you, why wouldn't you show up and be there for a little bit? Yeah, let's do a quick recap. I was thirsty. I get a little thirsty when I'm talking all the time. So you can use, so a quick recap is make sure you use high quality headshots. Make sure that all of your credits are added and up to date. Add a demo reel. Keep that updated as you get new, um, new credits. And then make sure that you have contact information and that your representative is listed. And as your career evolves and as we get older, be sure to add new headshots and new accolades and just keep, keep your growth current on your profile. I hope this information has been helpful in helping you to understand the importance of IMDB Pro, why you need it, and how to set it up. That's it for this episode. Make sure you check out Acting Lessons Learned, the podcast. You know, a lot of people tell me they really enjoy my conversations about terminating agents. So if you're interested in that, that information is there. I think I have three or four different episodes on terminating agents. Um, and also, Watch this video if you want to hear about how I recently overcame my fear of auditioning again after being on hiatus for two years. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Get your IMDb Pro set up. Get it up.